We continue now at the top of Daf Yud Gimel Amid Beis and Masechah Sanhedrin. This is Sanhedrin Daf 13b. And the previous summit, the Gemara was analyzing the Brisa, which brought various opinions about the leap year. And the Gemara asked, isn't Rabbi Shimon and the Tanakama saying the same thing? Both of them seem to be saying that the entire Cholomoid Sukkot needs to fall within the fall season. If any part of the summer enters into Cholomoid Sukkot, you need to declare a leap year. And the Gemara says, Ika Benayu, the difference between them is Yom Tekufa Maschil Yom Tekufa Gomer. The question is whether the day of the fall equinox is that the beginning of the fall season or is that the last day of the summer season? Velo Misaimi, the Gemara says, we can't identify which Tana says what, but that is what they are arguing about. And the Gemara can Continues the Bryce said in the previous summit, Achairim Omrim, that others say Miyuto, that it has to be a minority of the month. Vakama Miyuto, how much is a minority of the month? Arba Asar Yom, that is 14 days, meaning if the summer season extends 14 days into Tishrei. And the Gemara says, My Kosavri, what exactly do the Achairim hold? Ikosavri Yom Takufa Gomer, if they hold that the day of the equinox is the end of the summer season, Vakulai Chag Bo'inan, and you need to have the entire Cholomoid Sukkot in the fall. So Haiko, so you have that anyway, meaning even in a situation, let's say, the equinox falls out on the 15th, not the 14th. If the equinox is on the 15th, then the first day of fall would be, let's say, on the 16th. That, that still should be sufficient. So we don't understand why the Acherim are saying 14 days. And the Gemara answers, Amr Rav Shmuel Bar Rav Yitzchak, Rav Shmuel Bar Rav Yitzchak says, Acherim bitkufas Nisan Kaimi, the Acherim are actually talking about the season in Nisan. Tersiv, as it's written in the Pasuk, Shamor es Chodesh Ha'aviv, it says you have to keep the month of the spring. And what we understand that to mean is, Shamor Aviv Shel Tekufa, Shiyehei Bechodesh Nisan, that spring equinox, it has to take place in the month of Nisan. And Rashi here explains, Shamor es Chodesh Ha'aviv, Shamor Aviv Shel Tekufa, Shiyehei Bechodesh Nisan, it means as follows. Shamor Tekufas Chodesh Nisan Shalchama means to say the season that takes place in Nisan, that's the spring season. Sheyehei Besoch Chidusha Shalavana, that should be while the new moon is still new, meaning it should be in the first part of the month. Aviv Hu Nisan Shalchama, Aviv refers to again the spring season going by the solar calendar, Shein Nisan Kare Aviv El Alpi Bishal Hatvua, because the reason that Nisan is called Aviv is because of the ripening of the of the produce. Shemis Bakeris Bo, that's when everything ripens. The Chol Bikor Hatvua Vite Hakayetz Vachoref Lachesh Ben Achama Heim. And when it comes to the ripening of the crops, when it comes to the seasons. In summer and winter, that all goes by the solar calendar. So that's what we're referring to over here when we talk about the Aviv Shel Tkufa. The Amar Achman and the Torah is saying, Shomer Shei Chodesh Nisan Shel Chama. You have to make sure that this solar calendar, this season of spring, Nimshach L'Soch Yemei Chidusha Shel Levana. That has to be that has to be during the time of the new moon. Tchsiv Chodesh, because it says Chodesh Ve'ein Loshon Chidush Nofel Ela Alavana. That word of Chodesh of Chidush that has to do with the moon. Hamischa. Which, which becomes renewed. And what it's teaching us is that that season of the spring season, the spring equinox, has to be during the new moon. What's considered the new moon? That's the first 14 days of Nisan. But if it's any after that, that's considered already the old moon. And therefore, that's why it is necessary. Let's say the spring is falling out too late. It's not falling out in that first first half, in those first 14 days of Nisan, you have to declare a leap year in that situation. But the Gemara continues, if that's the concern, why not just say that Ador is a leap month, just add a day to the month of Ador to solve that problem. And Rashi explains, that'll just push off Pesach one day. And even if that causes Pesach to fall out on a Monday or a Wednesday or a Friday, that doesn't matter. Because the only reason that we don't make Pesach on Monday or Wednesday or Friday, the whole reason for that is just because of Tishrei. But in a situation where it's impossible, otherwise it would actually be better to just say that Adar is a leap month at a day and let it fall out on a Monday, Wednesday or Friday. And then you'll take care of the problem of having a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, which is really a problem only for the young Tovim and Tishrei, just take care of that in one of the months. Of the summer months, you'll have one other month that's going to be a chaser. And that way Tishrei can fall out on the day that you want it to fall out. You don't have 
to go ahead and make the whole year a leap year. Now everything gets pushed off an entire month just for this reason. And the Gemara continues and answers, Amar Rav Acha Bar Yaakov, Rav Acha Bar Yaakov says, Tana, the Tana of the Brais, so the Acherim, Milmala Lamata Kachashev, they're actually counting from the higher numbers to the lower numbers. Vahachi Kamar, it means to say as follows, Ad Miyuto Miyavrin, until you reach the Miyut, which is 14 days, you're going to declare a leap year. Vakama Miyuto, how much is a Miyuto? How much is that minority, Arba Asar Yom, that refers to 14 days? That's the minority of the month. And Rashi explains, Tana da Acherim mil malo lamata kachashiv. This Tana of the Acherim is starting actually from the higher numbers and descending. Vahachi Kamran is saying as follows, Ma'avrin ad miyuta, that we're going to declare a leap year until you reach miyut, which is 14 days. Velo miyuta bechlal, but we're not counting that day 14. Kilomer, what it means to say is as follows, Im tachsar tkufas teves yud ches yomim, o yud zayin, o tes zayin, o tes vav. Let's say the season of teves, which is the winter season, let's say that's missing 18, 17, 16, 16 or 15 days, meaning 18 days it's going into Nisan, or it's going into Nisan 17 days, 16 days. The Tipol Tkufas Nisan, Tkufas Nisan, Biyom Tazayin. And then what we're essentially saying is that the season of Nisan that actually begins, that spring season begins on the, on the 16th, Miavrin. So if the spring season is beginning on the 16th, then you're going to have to declare a leap year. You're going to have to add an entire month. That's too late. Avalim Chosra Yudalid. But let's say you get to 14, meaning Venafel Tkufas Nisan, but Let's say the Nissan season is actually starting on the 15th, so then already you're just one day off. If you're only one day off, ain ma'avrin, then you're not going to declare a leap year and add an entire month. De ma'avrin la'adr, because then you can have another solution of simply adding a day to adr. Vetipol tkufas nisan biyadalad. And then if you add a day, so the tkufas nisan is going to fall out on the 14th, which is what you're aiming for. Viyom tkufa maschil, because the yom tkufa, the day of the spring equinox, is the beginning of the spring season. Viyasa pesach biskufa chadosh. And then your pesach is being done, bitkufa chadosh, and that would be fine. And the Gemara continues, Ravino. Ravina says, When the Acherim say 14 days, they actually are talking about Tishrei. And the problem, again, is even if you're talking about the end of the summer season being 14 days into Tishrei, and even if you're going to say that it's on the 15th day that the fall season is beginning, but still, why does it need to be the 15th? It's only that all of Cholomoed needs to be in the fall. Why do we care about the 15th of Tishrei, which is not Cholomoed, that's Yontiv? And the answer to that is, It's because the Acherim actually hold Kulei Chag Bo'inon, you need the entire Yontav of Sukkot to be in the fall, V'yomtov Rishon, and you need Yomtov Rishon as well. You do need the 15th of Tishrei, which is the first day of Yontav of Sukkot. That also needs to be in the fall, and that's why they are saying that as long as the fall season has begun on the 15th, that's okay. But if the fall season is beginning after the 15th, you're going to need a leap year. And the Gemara says, Yomtov Rishon, the Yomtov Rishon really needs to be in the fall, but Chag Ha'asif Ksiv, doesn't it say it's the holiday of gathering? No one's gathering on the 15th, you can't gather anything on Yontiv. And the Gemara answers to that, Chag Habo, Bisman Asifa. What it means is the holiday that comes at the time of the gathering, this entire holiday has to be in the time of the gathering. And so therefore, again, as long as fall is starting and the entire Sukkot is within fall, you are okay. But if the fall season begins after Sukkot, even if it's just one day, even if just the 15th of Tishrei, that first day of Sukkot, even if that is taking place in the summer season, that's a problem and they need to declare a leap year. And the Gemara continues with the two dots. The Mishnah said, Smichas is a That's referring to when the members of the Sanhedrin, they would lean their hands upon the carbon that's known as the Par Helam Dover Shel Tzibor. And there's a machlokas in the Mishnah exactly how many zakenim are required. We'll see this in the Gemara in a moment. The Gemara says, Tanu Rabban and the rabbis taught, V'samchu zikne, it says that the elders will lean upon the animal. Yachol zikne hashuk, I might think that it means elders from the marketplace, from anywhere. Talmud Lomar Eida, it says from the Eida, that indicates from the Bezdin. I Eida yachol ketane Eida, now if it, said, if it just said Eida, I might think it means even the Sanhedrin ketana, not the major Sanhedrin. Talmud Lomar, the Pasuk says, Ha Eida, what does it mean? Ha Eida it means the ones that are specially, specially designated. It means from the Sanhedrin Gedola, the elders have to come from there. The Kamahin and how many elders are doing the smicha. 
And so the Gemara says, V'samchu shnayim, the word V'samchu is plural, that indicates two judges. Zikne shnayim, zikne is also plural, that's an additional two judges, that's four judges. Bein bezdin shakal, you can't have an even number on a bezdin. Mosifan aleim orecha, therefore we add another judge for a total of five. Harekan chamisha, divrei Rabbi Yehuda, there's a total of five judges according to Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Shimon Omer, Rabbi Shimon says, Zikne shnayim, we only learn from the word Zikne that, two, that it's two judges, we don't learn from V'samchu. Bein bezdin Shuckle, you can't have an even number. Mosif and Alein Odechad, we add another one. Harekan Shalosha, that's a total of three judges. And the Gemara says, Rabbi Shimon Haksiv Visamchu. Now, according to Rabbi Shimon, what does he do with Visamchu? He's not using that for an additional two judges. And the Gemara says, Ahumi Boile Legufe. He needs that for the actual mitzvah itself to know that they're supposed to lean their hands upon the animal. For Rabbi Yehuda, but Rabbi Yehuda says to that, Legufe Lo It's not true. You don't need the word Visamchu for that. Dim Kain, Delo Asi Visamchu Lidrasha. Because if, if Visamchu is not used for a drasha, it could have just written, Lichtov, Zikne Ha'eda, Yedeya Mal Rosha Par. It could have said, the Elders of the Ada, they put their hands on the head of the on the head of the bull. So what does it need to say? Vesamchu, it must be that Vesamchu is for a drasha. And the Gemara continues, Rabbi Shimon, now Rabbi Shimon responds to that, if it was written that way, I might have thought, what does it mean, al? It doesn't mean that you have to put, that you have to lean the hands on the head of the animal, it just means nearby. For Rabbi Yehuda, but Rabbi Yehuda says back to that, Gamar Rosh Rosh Meola, he learns out from the word Rosh, it says that by Ola, and there we know that it's putting the hands upon the head of the animal, and so that applies here as well through this Gezer Shava. For Rabbi Shimon, Lo Gamar Rosh Rosh Meola, and Rabbi Shimon, he doesn't learn this Gezer Shava of Rosh Rosh, that it says Rosh over here, and it says it over there, he doesn't learn that Gezer Shava. And the Gemara continues, Tanit was taught, Smicha u Smichas Zekeinim Begimel Smicha, and Smichas Zekeinim requires three people. And the Gemara says, My Smicha, My Smichas Zekeinim. What is Smicha and Smichas Zekeinim? It seems to be two separate things. We understand that one of them refers to the Smicha we were just discussing above by the Parhelam Dover Shel Tzibur, but what's the second one? And the Gemara says, Amr of Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan says, Mismach Savi, what it means is, Smicha by the elders, it means to say, when somebody gets the title of Rebbe, there is smicha in that situation, and the Bryce is saying you need three people for that. And the Gemara continues, Amr Abay Rav Yosef, Abay said to Rav Yosef, Mismach Savi Bishlosha Menolim, from where we know that that kind of smicha needs three people. Ilayim if you're going to say it's from the following Pasuk where it's written, by Yismoch as Yod of Olav, that he leans his hands upon him. This is by Moshe Rabbeinu giving smicha to Yoshua. So that's just one person. Yachi, if so, Tiski Bechad, it should be sufficient with just one person. Vechitema Moshe Bemakum Shimem Vechad Koyin, if you're going to say that Moshe is like the Sanhedrin of 71, so then Yachi, if so, Liboy Shivim. Vechad, then 71 should be required. And the Gemara says, Kasha, the Gemara leaves this as a difficulty. And the Gemara continues, Amar le Ravacha, Bereidu Rava le Ravashi, Ravacha, the son of Rava, said to Ravashi, Biyada Mamish Samchin when we do smicha, again by a smicha by Rabbanim, is that actually done with the hands, literally with the hands? Amar le said to him, Samchin le Bishma, really what it is, is just by calling him a name, they don't actually use their hands. Kari le Rebbe, they call him Rebbe. Viyahavi le Rishusa le Meidan Dine Knossos, and they give the person permission, now he can adjudicate cases related to fines, to Knossos. And the Gemara says, Vechad lo Samach, is it really true? That one person can't give smicha. But didn't Rav Yehuda say that Rav said Baram Zocher Oso Ishlatov that the following person should be remembered for good? Rav Yehuda Ben Bava Shmo. His name is Rav Yehuda Ben Bava. Shel Molehu. If not for him, Nishtachu Dine Knossos Mi Yisrael. The laws of fines would have been forgotten from Klal Yisrael. The Gemara says Nishtachu. Would they really have been forgotten? Nigrasinu. Let's just learn them. And so the Gemara says Ella. Rather, and we will continue with this discussion in the next video. And Daf Yudalid Amid Aleph.